Welcome to yet another informative dairy farms show. Young Kenyans are taking up dairy farming in a big way. At the core of this industry is Diana Miano, a young Kenyan lady passionate about dairy farming. Diana is the overall manager at Kaidan Farm. The farm is located at Murera in Ruero, Kiambu County. Kiambu County is a county in the former central province of Kenya. Its capital is Kiambu and its largest town is Thika. The county is adjacent to the northern border of Nairobi County. The county experiences bimodal type of rainfall. The long rains fall between mid-March to May, followed by a cold season usually with drizzles and frost during June to August and the short rains between mid-October to November. The annual rainfall varies with altitude with higher areas receiving as high as 2,000 millimeters and lower areas of Thicker Town constituency receiving as low as 600 millimeters. The average rainfall experienced by the county is 1,200 millimeters. The dairy farm was started in 2018 in October. We started dairy farming um, last year in October. So the cows here are one year old. Growing in Nanyuki, where her mom does dairy farming, Diana tells us she was inspired by passion to venture into the dairy industry. My mom is also a dairy farmer. So I grew up uh, loving uh, the cows and all that. So when I was, at some point, when I was looking for something else to do, we thought of. Uh, dairy farming. Diana has a background in design and printing. This is what she was doing before ditching it for dairy farming. She confesses that she loves dairy farming. Professionally, I did uh, design and printing. That's what I, uh, I've been doing in um, uh, River Road since last year, October. So when we started dairy farming. So uh, as we went by, I got tired and uh, was looking for something that I love doing. Yeah, not just for um, business and all that, but something I have a passion in. Starting can sometimes be difficult. Diana did not know much about dairy farming. She had difficulties with feeding and managing on the farm. She has, however, learned on the job. The learning process led them to low milk production, which has since improved as experience increased. Hayden um, started some years back with the pigs um, farm and the poultry farm. So I came up with the idea of uh, the dairy farming. So as new farmers, as new farmers, we didn't uh, know what um, to do in terms of feeding, in terms of um, knowing when the animals are healthy and all that and we didn't know what to do to, um, to improve our milk production. So these are the things we, we, we were learning as time went by. So the learning process meant um, uh, low milk production because we didn't know to do it right. But I can say that we've gained um, uh, knowledge and we are somewhere. Starting with three in calf heifers, Diana tells us that Kaidan Farm has grown. She now has three Frasian cows and four heifers. One of the heifers is an Ashaya and the rest being Holston Frasian. Of the seven animals, seven are in calf at different stages of pregnancy. This, according to Diana, is key for continued milk production. In October, we started with three cows. Three cows were in calf. Uh, we have three heifers since that time, and we've added one Asha heifer. We have fresh and the six uh, cows are fresh, so we added one uh, Asha because it's gonna uh, milk. Uh, the Asha is better uh, in terms of fat, and it's fatty than the fresh. So, uh, as we went to many uh, farms and watched uh, many programs. Uh, to Lisoma, it's good to mix the breeds. So that's when the Asha came in. So we have 
from October when we started, we have seven cows now. Yeah. Okay. And from uh, the seven, uh, five are in, in calf. Diana starts her day at 3 a.m. in the morning when milking is done. Cleaning of the cow shed is done. Milk is sold at 6 a.m. in the morning. Cleaning of the cow shed is done again at 9. Milking is done three times every day. The second milking is done at 10 and the last milking at 6 p.m. Feeding is then done every day at 11 a.m. and at 6 p.m. After feeding the cows, they are left to rest and chew cut so they can make milk. So after 6, um, we will clean the cow sheds again uh, before milking. Uh, the next milking, we milk three times, at 3, at 10, and at um, 6 in the evening. So um, after 6, we, we clean the cow sheds again at 9, and then milk at 10, and then feed the animals, the cows, uh, at exactly 11, you have to do it the same time every day. Clean the cow sheds, again we clean three times in a day. So you leave the cows to relax uh, before the next milking time. Because it's important when they're sleeping and they're chewing cards for the milk production. Diana tells us they initially had a challenge of mastitis in the farm. She therefore makes sure that the cow shed is cleaned thrice a day. The cows are then washed once every week. This has helped them combat mastitis and ticks. When we started, we had um, challenges of mastitis. So our vet told us that um, um, it's purely because of uh, cleanliness. Mastitis is caused by dirty cow sheds. Yeah. So you have to clean, you have to make sure the cows are clean. And we also clean the cows themselves. We wash them uh, once in a week. So you have to make sure it's clean for, uh, to avoid um, uh, mastitis and um, ticks. Ruminants need a daily supply of all nutrients required for maintenance and production. Milk, meat, growth and pregnancy. Quantitatively, any type of nutrient can limit performance levels, but the most likely to be in short supply are energy and protein. This is especially true for high and average yielding cows. Feeding of dairy cows varies. An in-calf cow is fed on dry cow feed. The feed is balanced and is low in protein to avoid the cows getting excessively fat. Fat cows have difficulty in calving. When a cow calves down, it is then fed on dairy feeds. The feed should be high in protein and carbohydrates. Animals feeding on green pasture normally receive all vitamins that are needed. Vitamin supplements are often added to balanced ratios prepared as feed to be used in animals housed and reared in intensive systems. Vitamin A is one of the most important vitamins in animal nutrition. The vitamin is found in carotenoid, pigment of green plants. Vitamins D, E and K are also present in green plants. The availability of high quality water for ad libitum consumption is critical. Insufficient water intakes leads immediately to reduced feed intake and milk production. Water requirements for dairy cows are related to milk production. Dry matter intake, ratio dry matter concentration, salt or sodium intake, and ambient or environmental temperature. Milking cows are fed thrice a day, that is after every milking. The calves are then fed on milk for three months before weaning. Hay, calf pellets, and mineral salts are also supplemented. Feeding varies. Um, like when uh, the cow is uh, uh, in calf, you give it dry cow feeds. Dry cow feeds means you reduce the amount of um, uh, proteins in your food so you balance so that the, the cow would get so far. Uh, there is danger in fatty cows when they are giving birth so we give them dry cows. So when it gives birth we go back to dairy feeds that's when we, we add uh, more proteins because every milking time a cow loses 
um, too much uh, calcium. So you have to add um, more proteins in the feeds. Um, we give it three times in a day. Every milking, after every milking time, it's fed. Uh, those are the milking cows. We start giving milk uh, to the cows at zero to three months. It's purely milk and uh, salt, minerals, and um, hay, just, and pellets. Not too much, just a little, but the main thing we feed on it is, uh, on the calves, is milk. So it's um, for three months, and then after three months, we start winning, winning the calves. Once weaned, the calf is also fed on feed rich in mineral salts. The quality and quantity matter as well. This ensures that the heifers grow fast so they can be served. What you feed the cow is very, and the calves is very, very important in the growing of the calves. So, um, and the quality and the quantity matters too. Uh, what we did with the calves is that we fed them good quality, um, everything that a good calf should be fed, and then we added the quantity. So they grow fast, very fast. Heifers are different, and I guess it's uh, from the way they are fed, because one of our heifers was serviced at one year, two months. And usually it happens at one year, six months. So it grew fast.